Good morning and welcome back to Gardens and Grace. My name is Tasha, for those of you who don't know. And today I'm hanging out in the garden. It's Saturday and I have cleared my schedule for the whole day to just be out here in the garden. I've got a lot of projects I wanna do uh, around the garden today. One of them being building a new garden bed. Sometimes we can think that gardening has to be expensive and sometimes I feel like we do things the hard way for no good reason. So today I want to walk through, while, while I love things that are aesthetically pleasing, while, you know, there are times where I, I spend, I do spend a considerable amount of money on, on things in my garden and amendments and um, building raised beds and things like that. There's a place for that. Absolutely. And if that is you, please go ahead and build, uh, build garden beds, buy already pre-made raised beds, you know, add in amendments and, and whatnot. But if you're trying to get started growing food and you just want to build a simple garden bed and know how to do that in a little bit of time and with a little bit of money or, or free, if you have, if you have more time, you can do it for free. Hang out with me in the garden today and let's build a garden bed together for little or no money. So I'm going to build a garden bed in this space right here. Now I covered this with a tarp a couple of weeks ago and had I had the foresight to do it in the fall, that would have been a lot better. I could have done it for completely free. What I mean by that is I could have taken and, and um, did, a, did a compost pile right here in this space with leaves, grass clippings, with kitchen scraps. I could have thrown in some organic fertilizer. I could have thrown in some coffee grounds, you know, just whatever, organic matter and allowed it to break down over the winter. I would have covered it with a tarp, allowed it to break down over the winter, and it would have done a couple of things. It would have killed the grass um, underneath here because the grass wouldn't have had access to sunlight, and it would have allowed the time for that organic matter to compost down, feeding the soil, adding a lot of nutrients to the soil. And in the spring, I could have come out here, uncovered the tarp, and just done a little digging, a little fluffing up of the soil, and been ready to plant in it. That had been a really great way to prepare this space. I didn't have the foresight to do that though. I didn't actually know I was gonna build a garden bed in this space. I have garden beds on either side of this tarped area. So I honestly thought I was just gonna leave this a pathway, but a couple of weeks ago, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna build a new garden bed and I wanted to walk you guys through that process. So. Uh, I went ahead and covered this about three weeks ago, was about three weeks ago, just, just long enough for the grass in this area to be killed off. What I'm going to do today is we're going to go ahead and uncover this tarp and we're going to use a rake and a shovel and we're going to do just some, pull out some of that dead grass, fluff up the soil a little bit. So then I'm going to take, I went to a big box store, store yesterday and I didn't spend um, a lot of money. I think it was $30, $30 or so, and I got a couple bags, several bags of, of I got some in-ground garden soil. I didn't go crazy, I just bought something cheap, right? In-ground garden soil. I'm gonna add some potting soil to that, a couple bags of potting soil. Again, I didn't go get the most expensive uh, potting soil, you just don't need to. And then I'm gonna add some organic granular fertilizer, and that's gonna be the amendments here in this bed. And pretty much that's gonna be it. I'm gonna be ready to plant in it. So. Come along with me and let's get started on taking this space uh, and making it into our garden bed. We're gonna be able to do this pretty quickly, hopefully. So let's get to work and go ahead and uncover this garden bed and see what we're working with. And I can already tell that not all of the grass is dead, especially in this area over here. But as we get toward the middle, um, it looks a lot better. There's a lot more dead grass, but that's okay. The other thing we could do, we could, uh, we could have taken and covered this area in cardboard and then put a lot, bought a lot of bagged soil. We wanted to build a garden bed in a day. That's, that's one of the ways we could do it. We could throw a, a cardboard down and throw a ton of bagged soil on top of that and be ready to plant in it same day. good to add a lot of compost in this space because it's 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 a new garden bed 
Compost is good anyway. And if you're, pro tip, if you're not already making compost, the very first thing you should do is get a compost pile started. Compost is easy to make. You can do it. You don't have to worry as, there's, there's a lot of information about greens and browns and ratios. You don't have to worry about that too much. And I'm gonna tell you why. As long as you have greens and browns, as long as you have organic matter, it will break down. It doesn't require, it's not rocket science. Now, if you wanna make it break down quickly, that's when you're gonna worry about ratios and you're gonna worry about turning your pile. If you really want it to break down quickly, that's something you would worry about. That's something that you would do. But it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be complicated. I almost never turn my piles. I turn my pile once, twice actually, a year. That's about it. Uh, and I usually, and I can still create compost. Now, I don't create all the compost I use. If you wanted to create all the compost you were gonna use, that would be something you would want to do. You would want to turn your pile consistently, uh, get a good amount of air coming into it so it so it breaks down and it's, and it's aerobic. Um, and aerobic means with air, like there's air within the pile. Um, also anaerobic, meaning without air, it does smell bad. So if you're creating a compost pile that you're not turning, don't put it close to your house. My point is this, there's not a one size fits all approach, right? Get outside and play around until it makes sense for you, until it works for you. So, so if you're gonna build a compost pile, start with some greens, which are your, your grasses, your um, things high in nitrogen. That's really what that means. So you're gonna, your coffee grounds, kitchen scraps, grass clippings, and then some browns. So cardboard, uh, important that it's not like dyed cardboard and it doesn't have like a lot of tape on it. Cardboard, cardboard paper products like newspaper would be a good brown. Some dried dead leaves that have sat for a little while, that would be a good brown. Straw is a good brown. Add your greens and add your browns into your compost pile. Turn it if you want to, um, but if not, just add it there, add some water to it and let time break it down. That's all you really need to do. Anyway, so what I'm finding with this space is the grass, like I said, it's only been three weeks. So the grass is not as dead as I wanted it to be. That is okay. We're gonna go ahead and do a little manual labor. It's probably good for me. So I'm gonna do a little manual labor and I'm going to dig out this space a little bit, rake it up, um, add in my amendments and we're gonna call it a day. I said I was gonna do two feet of space. So let me go get a tape measure. I'm also gonna grab another tool, like a flat shovel. I'm gonna grab a flat shovel or, or an edging shovel so that I can make a, a nice edge to this garden bed. You don't have to do that step. I just wanna do it because I, I like to have a nice edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and use my tape measure um, so that I can border this bed so that I have about two feet of walking space between this bed over here and this one, and this bed over here and this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. I'm just gonna use, right now I'm just gonna use my hoe. And then, um, and then I'm gonna edge it out. If you, if you plant your, if you put your garden beds too close together, you don't have walking space and, and, and you you don't want your garden beads beds to be more than four feet wide because then your arms can't reach in from either side. So best practice, garden beds no more than four feet wide and two foot, uh, at least two foot of space in between each bed. So here, I'm just gonna create a little bit of an edge. not worrying about getting this perfectly straight you could you could come out with a you know like a string or something and worry about you know and, and try to make sure that you're digging your edge perfectly straight I'm not doing that today I think it's just as pretty when things are wonky and off-center like this one I'm pretty sure that that's a little off-center <laughs> and that's okay with me 
what I'm finding is that towards the middle of the bed, the grass is dead, but toward the edges where we had the tarp, the grass is still alive, healthy, and thriving. So I've got that edge about done. I'm gonna go ahead and edge out the rest of this, this space. And I'm gonna edge this side. I'm gonna do the same thing, two feet of space, and edge it out. And uh, I'll see you when that process is done. So I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this. I got the whole bed edged and it actually only took a few minutes. Um, I mean, literally maybe 10 minutes. I use this tool. Now, like I said, you don't have to edge if you don't want to. I just kind of like that nice, I like a nice border or a nice separation between the path and the garden bed. I, I got this. It was super cheap. I got it at Walmart. I literally edged that bed in five minutes. Is it perfect? No, but it's good enough for me. I'll take it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig up the dirt or the grass that's still here. I'm going to leave as much of the soil as I can, because like I said, the soil is not bad. It's, it's fairly decent. I've already seen some worms in here. So that's a really, really good sign that we have fairly decent soil and we are going to amend it. We're not going to amend it heavily. Like I said, we just don't need to. Every year that we plant in it and every year that we amend it, every year that we add compost, our garden beds are gonna get better and better and better. But we can do it, we can start without it costing us an arm and a leg and without it taking a bunch of time. I grabbed a fork and I grabbed some gloves. I really think I need gloves for, for this. Last time I did one of these, I did not use gloves and I wound up with a ton of like blisters on my on my fingers from digging so i don't want to do that today i'm going to use gloves so what i'm going to do now um, is i'm going to go start with my edge and just kind of lift the soil and we're going to pull out this grass right now I do want to save as much of the dirt as I can. So what I'm probably going to do is throw the grass onto that tarp. We're going to let it dry out. Yeah. And we're going to add the soil back in later. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and spread this tarp back out and I'm going to throw some of the, the grass onto the tarp. is going to be a little bit of work. And I'm just going to kind of keep going back. I'm going to go in a line, do this area, do this area. Now we might throw some of these, this grass back in here. I could also give it to my chickens. They probably really appreciate it because I am going to add some amendments here and I do have some bagged soil. So I'm not being as careful about, I'm not being as careful about getting all of the soil off the grass, maybe as I, as I could be. I, I kind of want to save time right now. So you could theoretically sit here and get all of the soil off the grass or, or most of it um, and just pull out the grass. I'm not going to be as maybe intentional with that as I could be. But again, the more soil I leave in this space, the less amendments I'm gonna have to add, the less soil I'm gonna have to add, and ultimately, the more money I'm gonna save. I'm gonna keep going with this process of just going in, lifting it up, 
right? Pull it out, rake off some of the soil. And throw it on the tarp. So I'm gonna keep going and I will, oh, yep, I'm gonna turn the camera off while I do that because I think you guys probably would get bored just watching me, watching me pull grass out of this space. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off now, but I'll, I'll see you on, see you on the other side. I'll see you when I'm done with that process. So as I'm going through and creating this garden bed, I wanted to show you guys something. I can tell that my soil isn't awful, but it's really sandy. I thought that would be important to show you guys, like how you can tell if your soil is healthy or not. So healthy soil will, if you grab it and you get a ball, let's do this. If you get a ball of healthy soil and you do this and you squeeze it, it will retain its shape without like clumping together. If it clumps together too much, it's, it's heavy in clay. But if it does this and just breaks apart, it's really sandy. And so the best soil is kind of a mix between sandy, it, it's called a sandy clay loom. And so some sand and some clay and that, that holds its shape. And, and so the way that we get, amend this soil to be able to hold its shape is to add compost, to add organic matter. If you had really heavy clay soil that just didn't break apart at all, you would also add organic matter. You would add compost. So compost really is the answer, no matter whether you have sandy soil or whether you have clay soil, whatever the case may be, compost, organic matter, adding that to the soil really is the answer. The thing about sandy soil that I think is important to know is if, you're, if your soil is too sandy, like mine is, that means that water is gonna pass right through it. It's not gonna hold on to water. So your plants are gonna have a hard time getting enough water and you're gonna spend the season trying to water more and more and more to make sure your plants stay healthy. Clay soil, on the other hand, is gonna hold on to too much water um, and it's going to kind of suffocate the roots so the roots can't uh, uptake the nutrients from the soil and they can't, um, and, and they're sitting in too much water because the clay doesn't allow it to drain very well. All right, so I've pretty much finished uh, lifting up the soil using those forks and, and kind of lifting up the soil in this area. I took out a lot of the grass. The dead grass, the grass that, that was in the middle of the bed that was pretty well dead, I left a lot of that in the bed to keep that organic matter and let, allow it to continue to decay down to feed the worms, to feed the soil life. So what I'm gonna do now, so I left it in the bed, but what's important is that we break it up. So I did, I, I broke uh, that, that grass up, even the dead grass, I broke it up quite a bit with the garden fork. And what I'm doing now is kind of just raking this area, kind of just fluffing the soil, before I add my amendments. We wanna to try to, to get the soil as aerated and as fluffy as we possibly can. Right, and so it should just kind of come out like that. That's all I'm doing, just kind of fluffing up the soil. I could probably still, I could probably just use the garden fork and just have kept going, but I like my rake and I like the way um, it works to the little tines pull up the grass and the soil. See, and I can kind of find where I left big chunks, if there's any big chunks left. And this whole process, since I started, I've been building this bed for maybe an hour. And I've taken a couple breaks because it's hot out here and you have to stay hydrated. Pro tip. Stay hydrated whenever you're working outside, especially if it's hot. You know, don't get caught up just working and forget to, you know, drink water to, to replenish yourself because heat stroke, um, heat exhaustion, it's a real thing. And it's just something you don't want to deal with. So, and if you're not used to working outside, if you're not used to working out in the heat, take it slow. Take lots of breaks, go inside, cool off get some air conditioner, you know, you find yourself getting too hot, take a moment. Don't, don't try to rush. Again, we're not doing this so that we can just 
you know, check check that that item off the to-do list as quickly as possible. Find joy in the work that you're doing. Um, this isn't just a task to be completed, right? We're building a garden bed and we can plant flowers in that garden bed. We can plant vegetables and fruits in that garden bed. We can plant things that, that bring beauty to us that we find joy in and we can plant things that sustain our bodies. So this is a beautiful thing. I really like this. I really want us to find joy in the garden and I want us to slow down and enjoy the process. More than anything else, that's what I want for us to do. This bed is about three, I just measured it. It's about three and a half feet wide by six and a half feet long. Pretty good size. This bed is pretty well ready for amendments. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, grab my amendments and we're gonna go ahead and start adding them to this bed. So I went ahead and I fluffed up this space a little bit. I added in some of my native garden soil. I had a pile of dirt that I had, where I had built another garden bed and I had some, some dirt left over. So I kind of added it here. What we want to do is raise this soil up a little bit. That's what I want to do. I want to have, even though it's in ground, I want to have this soil a little bit higher. We're going to raise it up just a tad. Um, I grabbed out just a few bags. We're going to see what happens. We're going to see where we are, but I'm going to add, I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible so I can show you guys that it doesn't take, um, a ton of money to, to build a garden bed. So anyway, I'm going to throw in, this is just some cheap garden soil I got at Lowe's. I'm also going to add in a bag of potting mix. We're going to add in some organic granular fertilizer. That is a, that will break down over time. It does take time for that organic granular fertilizer to break down. Now, really important, this season, I'm going to use a water soluble fertilizer probably every two weeks. Um, I usually don't need to do it more often than that, or if, if we start to notice that the plants um, are, are suffering and struggling. Stay with me, I will show you that process. I'll show you how to tell when your plants need fertilizer and what to do in those cases. We'll, we'll talk a lot more about fertilizer as the season goes along. But just so you know, I'm gonna amend this bed and then I'm gonna add water soluble fertilizer about twice a month of garden soil. So that garden soil was three dollars three dollars a bag for that garden soil. The potting mix is eight was eight dollars a bag. So I've got one bag of potting mix, three bags of garden soil. We're gonna see what that does. But that would be three six nine that would be seventeen yeah seventeen dollars all total. I do have the organic granular fertilizer on hand, so I didn't buy that at the store yesterday. Um, I'll be honest with you, it, it varies so much depending on region and the time of year that you bar, buy your fertilizer. Pro tip, good piece of advice, buy your fertilizer in the off season. So as you're going into the later part of the growing season, early part of the fall, that is when stores will mark down fertilizer that's still sitting on the shelf. Um, even in the winter, they'll, they'll have, if they have fertilizer left, it's gonna be marked down. Buy your fertilizer then, you'll save a ton of money. And it's variable and it's the price on that is changing so much, so I really cannot tell you um, what fertilizer is costing. I, I don't know what I bought, I spent on this bag. I bought it in the fall um, and I just don't remember. I'm gonna see if I can find the receipt and I will, I will let you know about what that fertilizer is going for when we're done with this, when I'm done with this. This looks pretty good. So I kind of have a mound. I'm gonna kind of push it around. I have the native soil here. I could go ahead and just kind of mix all of that in. I'm really not gonna worry about it too much. I'm just gonna let this garden soil be on top, but I'm gonna mix it around and then I'm gonna add the potting soil. What I do wanna do is add the potting soil on top of that. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and add the potting soil on top of that. to get it for the edge but I don't want to uh I do want this to be mounted up a bit okay 
So this space looks pretty good so far. Um, let's see how big it is now, because I think we may have lost some space as I was digging and playing around here. Let's see what kind of space we got here. Huh. Yep, three and a half feet. We did keep three and a half feet. And about six and a half feet. So it's going to be a fairly healthy space. And I can grow a lot of food in this space. I can grow a ton of produce out of this space right here. So let's go ahead and add the potting soil on the very top. So we're going to go ahead and add the potting soil on the very top. We're going to kind of rake that around. We're going to leave that on the top layer though. And then I'm going to sprinkle in some organic granular fertilizer. Try to mix it in a little bit. That's okay. We want it just in that top, that little top layer. I suggest if you build an in-ground bed, make sure that you mulch around it raise it up off the ground so over time i actually want this much higher off the ground but this will work for now and it's kind of mounted up so what i like to do is go around the edge of the bed and just kind of create a separation i'm going to use my rake and just kind of push this up just like that it creates a little bit of a separation between the rest of the earth, the rest of the ground here, and the garden bed that we just built. Helps a little bit to protect against weeds. It also just looks a little better. So I'm just gonna clean that up, I'm gonna straighten that up, um, and then we'll add in the fertilizer. Is it perfect? No, but it looks great to me. I actually really like the way this came out. And I think we were at about, an hour and a half of work time and I've been talking to you on the camera and I've taken a couple of water breaks so realistically theoretically I probably realistically theoretically I probably could have done this in about an hour and I'm just gonna sprinkle it along the top there's a little bit of fertilizer already mixed in to the soil that I bought so I don't have to go crazy with this, maybe. Just kind of do that. And mix it into that, just that very, very top layer of potting soil that we put on. We're gonna mix that in. And the very last step is we're gonna water in this garden bed. And we're gonna call it done. All watered in. And this is what our new garden bed looks like. Simple in-ground bed slightly elevated we're going to mulch around it we're going to grow lots of food in this space i look back at my receipt for my fertilizer and i got it for six dollars on sale so i only used a couple handfuls of that fertilizer so i would say not even half the bag um i would say on fertilizer i spent maybe a dollar yeah maybe so we're gonna say 18 dollars to build this garden bed less than 20 bucks in a three and a half by six foot space that we're going to be able to grow a ton of food in i'm a hot sticky sweaty mess i'm gonna go take a a, um, a break and cool off i do have some more projects i'm gonna do around the garden today but i wanted to say thank you so much for spending time with me in my garden today May your garden be filled with grace and may you be abundantly blessed. We'll see you next time. Bye.